Ladies and gentlemen, I'm pleased and honored to present to you one of England's most courageous men, Mr. Paul Weston. He is loved and hated in England because he tells the truth about the consequences of the overwhelming immigration of especially Muslims. Some people call him names, such as racist, or other people call him a, a hero, a freedom fighter. A couple of years ago, he even became world famous because he was arrested for quoting Sir Winston Churchill. This, of course, this caused great turbulence in the media. Afterwards, the police commissioner, Simon Hayes, explained to the newspapers that Paul Weston had not been arrested for quoting Winston Churchill, but for creating a disturbance of the peace and for being reluctant to move along when told so by the police. Mr. Weston is indeed an extraordinary man. Let's give him a warm Danish welcome applause. <laughs> Mr. Paul Weston, the one Thank you very much, Eric. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for coming here today. The weather is beautiful, so I hope, you, uh, I hope you're enjoying it as much as I am. And before I start, uh, I'd just like to say thank you to, uh, to Eric here for organizing the, uh, the speakers, uh, for Kim from Uria, Urias Poston for organizing the event along with Henrik and, of course, Fleming, who has provided this glorious setting for a, a wonderful day. Thank you very much to all of you. Now, during my speech, I, I want you to, 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 to try to bear one thing in mind, one thing to remember, which was said by Alexander Solzhenitsyn uh, two or three decades ago. He said, in order to destroy a people, you must first destroy their past. And this is very important in what we are going through in Europe today. Now, there's a story of a an old lady talking to her great-grandchild. She's a very old lady, she's 90, 90 years old. And this little boy looks at her and he said, good Lord, Granny, he said, look how old you are. You come from a different era, a different generation. And she said, no, my boy, she says, I don't come from a different generation, I come from a different civilization. She was confident in her beliefs in her culture and contrast that with what the young people in Europe are like now, the small children. You know, the BBC did a, an interview with three children in a, an inner city school in London, heavily enriched by uh, our new visitors to our country. Two of them were foreigners and one of them was a little English boy. When they interviewed these, uh, these three children, they simply said, where are you from and what do you think? And this Pakistani Muslim girl said uh, she was from Islamabad originally, she was very proud of her country, she was very proud of her culture, very proud of her traditions, and she maintained that even though she lived in England, Pakistan and her culture were still close to her heart, along of course with her religion of Islam. They turned to the second child, a little uh, West Indian boy, and said, where are you from? He said he was from Barbados, and he loved Barbados, and he loved Barbadian culture, he loved his country, and again, even though he lived in England, his heart was still with Barbados. They turned to the third child, who's a little English boy, and said, where are you from? And this English boy said, I don't know. I'm not really from anywhere. I just don't know. He had been destroyed. He had been destroyed. Everything about him and his culture, his history, his heritage, his tradition had been mocked and derided. He was a product of imperialist 
empire of colonialism, of slavery, of murder, of genocide, of oppression. The little boy is only five years old. He already believes that he is inferior and that he has to have shame for his country and his culture. But who is this little boy? He is the product of thousands of years of evolution that went towards building the greatest civilization mankind has ever known. 3,500 3, years ago, Moses received the Ten Commandments. This is one strand of who and why we became we are. In ancient Greece, Pericles introduced the concept of democracy that again is another strand that has formed the West and Europe. In Rome, Roman law, again so incredibly important in what turned out to be Western civilization. And secularism, render unto Caesar that which is Caesar's, render unto God that which is God's. And then of course Christianity. Without Christianity, none of us would be living in the societies we live in today. And primarily this is because of the golden rule. Do unto others as you would like to be done to you. This is so important in who we are today. Most people are no longer particularly religious, particularly Christian, but they cannot deny the reason why we are who we are. We're not Buddhists, we're not Hindus, we're not Sikhs, we're not Muslims. We may be agnostic, we may be atheists, but we are who we are because of Christianity and because of the golden rule. You know, and then we move on from, uh, uh, from, from those ancient times and we progress forward through the centuries, through enlightenment and the age of reason, and come forward to the modern day with its glorious art and music and architecture and literature. Beethoven, Mozart, Van Gogh, William Shakespeare are all products of our historical civilization. And this little boy in the school knows none of this. All he knows is shame. How dare they do this to our children? How dare they deprive them of their heritage, their culture, their history, their very conscious being? How dare they? You know, the foundations of our culture are not primarily under threat from Islam yet, but they are very much under attack from our own people, our own traitor class of politicians and media people. And one example of this is a, a guy called Peter Sutherland, who is the United Nations Chief Migration Officer. And he has said that in order to achieve total political control over the European Union nations, they will use mass immigration and multiculturalism to destroy the nation states. This guy is a very important man. He doesn't mind saying this. He feels fearless. Another guy is Andrew Neither, who is uh, ex-British Prime Minister Tony Blair's speechwriter, who said the reason that they brought all of these people in from around the, the third world was to rub the noses of the right in diversity. But they didn't rub the noses of the right in diversity, they rubbed the noses of every single human being living in our Western European countries. Every single one of them, regardless of their politics, regardless of whether they're left or right, particularly the working class. Now this traitor class, I call them. They are using race as a weapon against us. Now if you use something as a weapon against a large group of people, you need to disarm them so they can't fight back. If they were using tanks against us, they would make sure we had no access to anti-tank weapons. Because they're using race against us, they are using the best weapon they know how to take away our only means of defense, which is to accuse us of being racists. 
Don't let them do it. There is nothing racist about wanting to preserve your country and your culture and your heritage. And if they use this word to try and deride you and make you fearful, laugh at them. It is no longer a word that means anything in the modern context. It is just part of this politically correct drive to destroy, like Peter Sutherland wants, the nation states of Europe. And political correctness was never designed as some lovely milk toast ideology to make people behave nicely to each other. It was done to destroy the very foundations of Western civilization. Who built Western civilization? It was European, Christian, heterosexual males, primarily. Who are the main <coughs> objects of hatred as per political correctness? White, Christian, heterosexual, married males. This is why they do it. They want to remove our civilization. The only way they can do that is remove the people that built our civilization. Yeah. Another strand of this is multiculturalism, which tells us that all cultures are equal. How can you possibly compare the modern-day liberal democracies of Europe and of the West with a 7th century barbaric ideology that wants to kill the homosexuals, kill the Jews, put the women in chains, and everybody not of the faith is essentially a member of the Untermenschen in the Nazi days or an infidel in the new Nazi days today. Now, our leaders are now telling us, with all of this uh, expansion of the Islamic State, that Islamic terrorism is the problem. No. Islamic warfare is the problem. This is, a, this is not the case. It is, it is, of course, a problem, but our big long-term problem is moderate Islam, not fundamentalist Islam. And it's purely down to demographics. We are still, in Europe, roughly across all the countries, 80% of the population. Islam is only creeping towards 20%. But the trouble with this is, is purely down to childbirth. If we only have, if we are 80% and we are only having 1.5 children each, and our women that are doing this are 35 years old to 40, then in 35 or 40 years time, you find that your population has decreased by 25%. If that 20% of Muslims are having four children each, and they're having them between the ages of 18 and 21, 22, then they are accelerating massively faster than we are declining. And it is literally one or two generations before we start to really feel this. Their generations, not our generations. And within three generations, we are going to be amongst people of 18 to 30 years of age, which is important because that is the age you are capable of carrying out violence if you wish to. And then we are in a, a very difficult situation. And as we are being replaced, even if they don't become violent, as we become replaced as a people, we are also replaced as a culture. And as we're replaced by a culture, we are also replaced as Western civilization. And we are looking quite possibly this century at the end of Western civilization if we, we and that is us because there are very few other people doing it yet, we have to grow. But if we can't stop this, there will be serious consequences. But we are doing it, we're working at it. We must never give up. We must never, ever give up. We keep on doing this, we keep on working at it, and we will defeat the traitor left. And we will defeat Islam. And we will reclaim our pride in our culture and in our Western civilization. And we will win. We will prevail. This is our land. This is our culture. 
This is our people and this is our civilization. Long live gentle Denmark, long live our culture, and long live Western civilization. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.